I swear to God, the moment I start recording, this noise happened. I... <sighs> okay, you're gonna have to deal with the background noise because I have to get this video done this week and I can't keep waiting for them any longer. Hi, Vidgets. My name is Frustration right now, clearly. I actually think I need to cool off because it's a little... It's a little hot in here, don't you think? Oh, what's this, you see? Oh, just a little thing I've been working on for a few months. Yeah, that's right, this is a fan. A Chinese fan. Vente Letter Chinois. You guys know I used to have that big fan that I'd always bring in that was red and fluffy. Well, I couldn't bring that to college here because I wanted to keep it at home. Well, Crowdmade, the merch company I'm with, they asked me, like, think of a product that would be new, that would be unique for your channel, and I said, can you make fans? Is that a thing that YouTubers can do? Because I think only Jeffree Star has made a fan before. Because the only merch fan that I've seen was a Thorpe fan done by Trixie Mattel. And lo and behold, Crowdmade came through and now we have my eyes on a rainbow fan. You can get them at the link right here and in the description below. They only have a limited quantity, so get them while they last. And yeah, you can just be sassy whenever you want. And I know Pride Month was over, but a lot of people asked me to bring back that Pride merch and I can't actually, but they said I could make this and I thought it'd be nice for you guys to, you know, be sassy. Anyways, just wanna thank Crowdmade and once again, thank you guys for supporting me. Back to the real video. I'm in college now and I have to do projects. If you don't know, I'm at NYU Tannis School of Engineering, so I'm studying IDM, which is Integrated Digital Media. It sounds confusing, but basically I learn graphic design. I learn how to code and make images and, you know, draw stuff from code. I learned how to prototype things. I learned the laser cut printer and the 3D printer. It's a lot of fun stuff. Also, yes, my room expanded. I could do another room tour because there's twice as much stuff already. And for my ideation class, I had to study an artist. So I chose Tim Burton because one, I love Coraline so much as a kid. Everyone thought it was weird and scary. I thought it was cute. And I also like his style of drawing in general. So part one was researching his creative process and how he designs his characters, how he comes up with these movies. Part two was creating my own version. You could basically do anything, but you have to follow his creative process. And I painted these two things. I recorded the process of me doing it, but it's mainly just a time lapse. There is no room in this room to do it. Like, if you look at this image, I used up a whole lounge and table. Like, I can't fit it here, I'm sorry. I know you guys don't mind voiceover, so this is basically what I'm gonna be doing. So yeah, let me show you how I got to here. So I first started making sketches, and I threw the sketches away, don't kill me. But I did like two or three sketches of each painting to get a feel of what I want the character to look like. And I'm gonna start with this because it seems more simple and you need to know this character before you get to the actual painting. So if you can't tell, this is me in Tim Burton style. I wanted to imitate his style of art because that was the assignment and I also wanted to try to put characteristics of myself into this character. Not just physically, but emotionally and personality wise. Cause that's what Tim Burton does. That's his creative process. So unfortunately his name is Cancer and I can explain. Bear with me here, I'm referencing the horoscope, not the condition. This guy is really into horoscopes. He has a moon shirt, which is inspired from that green moon shirt I always wear. He doesn't have a lot of friends because they all think he's weird for reading horoscopes. And he's usually tired and up at night, constantly studying them, which is why he has frizzled hair and like those droopy eyes. And he's always reading more, which is why he's a book. Also, Tim Burton just draws his characters like long and skinny. So this is, you know, my skinny legend version. I wish I was this tall, but that's not gonna happen ever. And trust me, this took four or five tries to get it right because I had to look at Coraline's character and I had to look at the characters from The Corpse Bride and Memory Before Christmas because I don't draw in this style. I don't know if you could tell, but I've never done something like this before. Now we get on to this painting. In short, it's basically Cancer on a planet and he's fighting a snake. That is what you get when you first look at it, but this is supposed to <laughs> This is supposed to be the cover art for the movie because Tim Burton makes movies. I didn't do a whole storyboard, but I have like the plot in my head. So in almost every Tim Burton movie, he transports the character to like a whole new world or it's just a fictional world in general. And I wanted to do that for this. Cancer lives in a nuclear family, which if you don't know what that means, it's just a regular house, regular family. Since he reads a lot, he found this old book about horoscopes and he reads about this 13 horoscope named Ophiuchus. If you don't know, that's a new horoscope that no one accepts. Like, not me at all. But I wanted to include that in the plot. So he reads it, and then he gets transported, Coraline style, to this new planet. Pretend there was a portal in the book and he's just sucked into it. This sounds like a stupid fan fiction, I realize. Then he gets transported on this random planet. I didn't name the planet yet. And it's supposed to be, like, Greek feeling. That is why there's columns here, and yes, I know the columns don't really show 
depth, and I realize that now, but I was supposed to make these longer and these ones fatter, but I'm sorry. Don't kill me, I'm self-taught, please. So I wanted the horoscopes to all be their own characters. I didn't want them to just be like stars or constellations. They're all based off a creature, and I wanted them to look human-like. I didn't get to design them, but I wanted them to look like gods that have traits of their, you know, animal or creature. Like, I'm not gonna have a crab as a character, it's gonna be a guy who maybe has one crab arm. But the reason why I chose a snake for Ophiuchus is because Ophiuchus is known as a serpent bear. And I thought, in what world is a guy holding a snake intimidating? Like, you see that on a boardwalk at Jersey Shore every single day. So I wanted to do something more intimidating that's like a basilisk or just a big anaconda, so I chose this. Yeah, it looks celestial-like because that's the point. It is a villain and it's supposed to be a god too. And because none of the 12 horoscopes want a 13th one, this is considered the villain because they want to be accepted in. That's basically the whole plot. So now I'm going to talk about how I painted this thing. So I first started off by sketching every single thing, which I have learned is a waste of time. Someone please tell me the way they paint. Like, if you are an actual painter, please let me know because I find that every time I sketch it out, I just end up painting over it and I can't see my pencil marks. I already had sketches before, so it didn't take that long, but I found that making the snake look like it was protruding and like going towards cancer was very hard, so I just tried to make the snake get smaller and smaller and like disappear almost back here. I think I got the point across. After sketching, I started off with the galaxy background and I've done galaxy colors before, but I wanted to mute the colors a little more because that's what Tim Burton does. He doesn't use bright colors usually, he tries to mute them down and make them more earthy and like dull, but he also adds a pop of color like with Coraline jacket. I don't know, it's confusing. It was a lot to research. But if you look at it from far away, it kind of all blends in, which is the point. I took a blue, purple, red, and a magenta. And yes, I know magenta and blue make purple now. Thank you for the 5,000 comments. I just placed them around in splotches and added black to like make it more dull and dark. That wasn't hard to do, except I got upset because I realized it was painting over my sketches and I was just wasting my time. Shit, while I was doing it. And I don't, like that I had a guideline. I don't- <laughs> What's up? You're in the video now. <laughs> Alright, then leave one that to be first and for- Can everyone stop coughing for one second? <laughs> After letting that dry, I wanted to outline the snake in black. So I took a little bit of pencil to guide myself and then just cover this all in black. And then I realized you couldn't see the snake at all. It looked like a black cloud at this point because I made the background too dark and I regret that a little bit. So I thought, why not just outline it because I know how to outline. That's something I can do at least. But I had to let the black dry. So then I started doing the constellations and I wanted to do real horoscopes, obviously, because it's about horoscopes. So I chose Cancer. I think this is Libra. Uh, let me know if you know these two, I forgot. And I just did it by taking the end of a paintbrush and like dotting it around. And at some point I closed my eyes because psychologically, your mind is inclined to make them look like they belong there, but stars are random. So I forced myself to do it as random as possible. And the best way to do that is to not see. And then I messed up here because I made a dot way too big. So I had to improvise, just do Libra there. What's that thing? Pop it, pocket, polka dot, <laughs> country slide, and hip hop it. And after that, I did the planet part, and I wanted to do a spotlight on Cancer so you could like tell this is the main character. And since Tim Burton does like, this sounds bad, but messy painting sometimes, that sounds like it's a bad thing, but I'm trying to say like, 
he doesn't make every line crisp. Sometimes it's a little bit like this, so it looks more scary looking. It's a good style, and I wanted to do that, so I just started off by painting the edges first with black, and then as my paint dried, I would just scrape it up towards the center. Also, if you look closely, you'll see that he still has like some pencil marks because I just literally painted through the sketches with white, and I realized that the white blended with the pencil graphite. That sucked but I now know not to do that. And the reason why I don't really record me painting stuff is because it takes literally forever. I think this took four hours and I don't really talk during it because if I talk, I can't concentrate. So outlining was just an hour of me just like this the whole time. But my trick is to outline a little bit farther than what you would like so that if you make a line too thick, you just cover it with black paint. And this could work with any background. Like if you chose to do a blue snake and you wanted to outline it with white, we'll just cover the white with blue if you get too much and make the line as thin as possible and look even. Because you are lying to yourself if you think I have a hand steady enough to outline like this. Also the symbol right here, that is Ophia Kiss's symbol. It's a U that has a squiggly line going through it. And I wanted that to be the pop of color. And then I added it to his eyes too, which the eyes weren't supposed to have pupils at first, but I realized that if I didn't give it pupils, you couldn't tell it was looking at cancer. So I'm glad my friend Caroline told me to do that. And then I spent 84 years putting stars on this freaking snake. It's like, I was like, who the fuck thought of Pusha Pusha? This is gonna take so long. I don't even I realized I didn't put any stars on the chin, which makes me mad now. By the way, I also outlined the snake teeth with black to make it sharp as possible. And after that, I added columns because I wanted the person watching this movie to realize that this is another planet. Like, you don't see columns like these on Earth every single day. This is almost supposed to be like an arena that the gods meet. And I have only one reference, and it's from Maple Story. I will show the image here, but if you know, Pink Bean, Final Boss, I like that arena and I want it to look like this. That's the gamer coming out of me. Anyways, I painted in white instead of like traditional tan column color. Tan doesn't, it doesn't fit with the color scheme I use. And I wanted these to be like angled because if they're just straight, you don't see depth, which is made me so mad because I realized it after I painted in white. But I just added some random black strokes. I literally took a paintbrush and like dipped it in black, then took some black off and then... Also fun fact, if you get those calligraphy pens that I talked about a long time ago on Amazon, I'll link them down below. You can outline this and it'll dry like paint, which is so cool to me. Granted, please spray this with acrylic sealer just in case. I'll also link the paint I used. And by the way, this was also drawn with the calligraphy pen. And after that, I just drew in cancer. And the whole time I was debating, do I want to give cancer like color? Do I want to make him have a skin tone? Do I want to make him have his green shirt? And I thought no, because I would take it away from the focus. So I just did him in black and white, and I think it turns out fine. Most Tim Burton characters are very pale anyways. And I drew him messy on purpose, because I didn't want it to be like sleek. Most of his characters look a little disheveled anyways, and that's what I want Cancer to be, because I am I was very disheveled at this point, because it was like 1 a.m. And I forgot the shading technique, but I think it's crosshatch. I just did it on this side to give him some more dimension. I gave him little pointy elf boots and that is the whole painting actually. I think it fixed my hair. I think the last time I painted before that was a month ago so it was a nice return to what I like doing in my free time except I had to do it for a grade, and it was the day before. But yeah, that was my whole project. I hope you guys liked it. I'll let you know my grade. Hopefully it's good. If you want to see more of the work I'm doing in college, just follow my Tumblr right here. Our first assignment was to make a website. I've just been having a nice time overall in college. Like, I get to animate now, which I'm so excited to do. I just want to get to the point where I can animate my face, and then I'll make animation videos for you guys. I'll definitely be recording more of my projects because a lot of my major is design orientated, and I get to make stuff which is what I do on YouTube and that's why I love this major so much. If you have any interesting video ideas let me know I'm always open to them and if you enjoyed give this video a like leave a comment down below and subscribe for more below average videos every Saturday or Sunday. Keep my notifications on because I stream on YouTube now buy my merch but also save it because I have more Halloween stuff and Christmas stuff coming your way and now I'm gonna read a coming out story like I always do it's been 
way too long since I've done this. As always, I keep them anonymous, but these are just meant for you to help you come out and inspire you to do your own unique way of coming out. As a child growing up, I liked both girls and boys, and I was like, okay, I like boys, so there's no possible way I'm gay. I grew up not knowing that bi, pan, etc. was a thing until junior high. So through middle school, when I finally came to terms with the fact that I'm bi, I felt almost shameful. I finally came out of the denial stage, but I still felt this shame, this guilt that part of me was wrong or something. I still haven't fully come to terms with it, but when I watch your videos, I feel like I'm coming to peace with myself bit by bit. Some of you might think, well, that's not really a coming out story. It still is. A coming out story doesn't mean you have to share with the public. Like, you don't have to announce it to the world like I did on YouTube. The whole point of coming out is for you to come to terms with yourself. And this person did that. And I'm proud of them. And of course, that's like why I love doing this. Thank you for your submission. And by the way, if you want to give your own coming out story, just DM me. Just make sure it's not an essay because I can't read that long. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three. All right, do your construction now. Let's go. Come at me. Come at me.